Modern desktop PCs usually have backsides full of enough holes to give a tryptophobe an aneurysm. But those ports have all gone through a lot of different iterations over the years. Sure, we might rely on many staples like HDMI and USB now, but many more didn't make it. What about the ports that were just the absolute worst? <laughs> what happened to those guys? You might think it's a bit cringe to start dunking on things like old display connectors or proprietary Apple ports, but in some cases they kind of deserve it. For example, the High Density Interconnect 45 or HDI 45 was released on March 14, 1994 with the Power Mac 6100, 7100, and 8100 computers to use with the AudioVision 14 display and then never used again. Meaning this connector enjoyed a fulfilling life as long as those Power Mac models were being produced. So, for a whole two years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Apple. But during that time, the HDI 45 had the distinction of carrying the signal for your speakers, microphone, and video in stunning 480i on a single cable. If for some reason you didn't want to use this glorious connector, the AudioVision 14 also had an S-Video input port on the side, which <laughs> wasn't supported by Apple and went unused. Why did they include it in the first place? The answer is lost to the sands of time. You know what hasn't been lost though? Molex. Why is the Molex power connector stuck around for so long? The answer is that it is cheap. And no, that's pretty much it. It certainly didn't survive because it was easy to use, as anyone who's ever tried to pull apart a male and female Molex connector can attest, because the bond of true love is unbreakable. Remember those little like squeezy things that would push them apart? Oh, that was a high end feature. Fun fact, the standard four pin connectors that we call Molex today are actually based on a design from AMP, which now goes by TE connectivity, called the Maiden Lock, which was itself based on a pin and socket design originally produced by the Molex Connector Company. But the Maiden Lock design did little to address many of the original's problems. Back when they used to be standard power connectors for hard drives and disk drives, the pins of Molex connectors would often be pushed out of the back if they weren't perfectly aligned with the pin holes. The connector also had deceptive little handles on them that no human hands could really grip onto nicely until power supply manufacturers made things a little bit easier with these little pinchy tab things I talked about earlier. On top of all that, the connectors had a penchant for just breaking if manufactured in a subpar manner, which many, <laughs> many were. Remember, these are cheap. Well, Molex became a vernacular term used to refer to any number of similar four pin connectors, Molex, the company, is alive and well. And the connectors that we all think of when we say Molex still infest most desktop PCs to this day. Thank you, Molex. Thankfully, the world is starting to heal from the infestation of another horrible port, micro USB. Designed to take up less space than its predecessor, Mini USB, Micro USB was supposed to have an estimated lifespan of 10,000 insertions. Ha <laughs> uh, That was a funny joke. In reality, the tiny port, haha, <laughs> we're going for size now, huh, too? Oh, was so weak that it would often end up mangled well before it could hit the big 10 0 0 0. If the near microscopic clips that kept it nestled into its destination device got improperly bent or shaved down over time, as you know, friction does, you'd have yourself a cable that might just fall out if you looked at it the wrong way. If the port on your device ended up mutilated, which inevitably it would because again, friction, you'd be looking at either replacing it yourself with a very difficult soldering job or replacing the device entirely, as most people unfortunately would do. Thankfully, micro USB has been largely replaced by the much more user-friendly USB type C connector, which does have its own set of problems, but nobody's perfect. And that ain't even the half of it. We'll talk about even more silly PC ports after this message from our sponsor, SolidWorks. The 3D experience SolidWorks for Makers offer is available right now for a great low price of $99 per year, but viewers of our channel can enjoy an additional 20% off. This offer includes 3D Experience SolidWorks Professional, 3D Creator, 3D Sculptor, Visualize Connected, NC Shop Floor Programmer, and more. It's a great value for anyone creative, so what are you waiting for? Get an extra 20% off the 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers offer at the link below. As much as micro USB may have sucked, at least it was actually a standard. Something that can't be said about PC case front panel connectors. For decades now, every PC builder has been forced to reckon with a jumbled mess of single or coupled wires with tiny bits of plastic on the end labeled in a minuscule font, which then had to be matched up with errant spikes of metal on the motherboard marked with even smaller letters. Are these cables for ants? Ugh. 
Some motherboard manufacturers have taken pity on prospective builders and included little plastic guides to help out, but if you didn't buy a motherboard from one of the good ones, by the time the motherboard is in the case, you best have a flashlight and a magnifying glass handy to find where your wires are supposed to go, lest you find yourself with a non-functioning power button. Ugh. Speaking of ports that aren't functioning anymore, our last worst connector is the mysterious and short-lived micro DVI. Carrying a video signal, but not audio, it was not much smaller than a standard USB or HDMI port, both of which it actually resembled depending on where it was used. So where was it used? Only on two laptops released in early 2008. The original MacBook Air, where the micro DVI port could easily be mistaken as a USB type A port, and on the Asus U2E subcompact notebook, which featured the port disguised as an HDMI port. <sighs> what is going on here? Apparently, a port in two form factors was confusing for everyone else as well, because by the time summer arrived in 2008, the sun had already set on this abomination of a standard, and micro DVI's house had been foreclosed for good. Are there any other PC ports, cables, or connectors you simply cannot stand? Let us know in the comments down below, and hey, maybe we'll roast them in a future video too. And if you thought this was going to be about game ports and still want to know more about that, then why not check out our video on why PC game ports still suck. Thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out some of our other videos. Uh, I already said comment, but comment with some video suggestions if you want to. And don't forget to subscribe and follow.